In a move symbolizing the new way of campaigning on the Internet, President Obama's re-election team has bypassed television ads to release a documentary film online. The Road We've Traveled will be screened for the president's supporters tonight. Let's take a look. His advisors would ask where to begin. Which urgent need would he put first? Which is one, which is two, which is three, which is four, which is five? Where do you start? If we don't do this now, it will be a generation before 30 million people have health insurance. And with more on how campaigns are evolving on the web, we're joined again by two journalists from the new website, Daily Download. Lauren Ashburn is the site's editor-in-chief and formerly with USA Today Live and Gannett. Howard Kurtz is Newsweek's Washington bureau chief and host of CNN's Reliable Sources. So bypass buying all that national airtime, bypass uh, making deals with networks and television stations, just make it available to watch whenever. A big deal? To everyone, it is a big deal. This is the primary way that the Obama campaign is communicating with people. They feel like if they could put it in a place on YouTube or Facebook where you have similar people who like Obama, who then forward it to their friends and their friends and so on and so on, that they will get more traction that way. And this is a classic case, you know, although the campaign is billing this as a documentary film. I mean, clearly, this is sheer propaganda, even if it is produced by an Oscar-winning director. Uh, and you can just tell from that clip, it's the stirring story of a brave president who overcame a fiscal calamity. Very effective. And people can watch it. They don't have to depend on networks showing 20 seconds, 30 seconds, 40 seconds, people watch the whole thing. And it's also a great tool for fundraising for them. Because if you go to Obama's website, where they are playing the trailer and then will ultimately be playing the documentary, you actually have to give your email address before you can watch the trailer. Otherwise, you can't get access? Right, well, it's a little tricky to get out of there. I was trying to <laughs> sort of pull my iPad one way and get out. But you can't do it. So they are using this as sort of the new one-click way to get your attention. And isn't this? just a new way of doing a very old thing. Party political broadcasts have been around forever. Uh, profiles of candidates made by the party apparatus have been around for a very long time. Um, we're just trying to catch up with how people consume media, aren't we? Well, I think that it's an interesting point. Yes, more people are online. People are going away from traditional media. But as you said at the very beginning, this is a very cost-effective way for them to get their message out. Campaign ads cost millions of dollars, which go, which flow to networks and local stations. You avoid that. And also, they have all kinds of bells and whistles the Obama re-election campaign does. For example, if you watch a YouTube video provided by Obama uh, that's about Illinois, a list of your Facebook friends from Illinois pops up, and you can sh click a button, and you can share share the video with them. So it's, a, as Lauren says, a good organizing tool. And fundraising. You can get, they can get your money right out of your pocket with one <laughs> click. You know, here, join, give me $25 or, or whatever. And you can't do that from traditional media. So it's more than just passive consumption. It's a way of drawing you into a whole set of relationships, possibility for more content and click through. There's a lot going on there. Sharing <laughs> and contributing. <laughs> Another place where there's a lot of activity is on Facebook. And campaigns, I guess, are still finding their way, but very active in that very popular venue. Well, not only are the campaigns <laughs> active, but we found that people who don't like a particular candidate are also very active. Let's take a look at some of the pictures. One that we found we absolutely is loved is the, this anti-Romney Facebook group. One million Irish setters against Mitt Romney. And There's here you have the dog on top of the car because of the, the incident that happened 30, years, 30 ago. years ago. Right. And it's been a great organizing tool. That's very funny. But there, there are also groups like Mitt Romney is a big government rhino. Rhino, right. And how about... Uh, Republican in name only. That's Republican correct. in name only. Thank you for... Not an that. African <laughs> large man. <laughs> Without the H. Right. And, and what so, about Newt? Yeah, take a look at Newt. Here's the negative Newt website on Facebook, the page on Facebook, no to Newt Gingrich. And if you look, the little girl here in the front has a big yawn on her face, very subtle. But each of these have thousands of followers, and some have, have more. There, uh, there are also less polite ones like Newt Gingrich, will you please shut up? And there's one that has a picture of Newt Gingrich as the devil. Uh, so it's a way for people who, who are animated enough by politics who, that they don't like somebody who's running to share that. And then when you turn to President Obama, there's one group that I like the title, I hate it when I wake up in the morning at Barack Obama's president. But there's also a group called Obama Countdown. Obama. 
226,000 people liked it, and there you can buy T-shirts and caps. Again, it's commerce, right? Picture of the president with a red slash. Right, and if you take this um, out of the realm of people who don't like the candidates and actually take it to people who do and the campaigns themselves and their own website, President Obama is by far ahead of all of the other candidates. He has 26, almost 26 million likes on his Facebook page. And if you look at the other ones, Gingrich is, you know, about 300,000, Romney, not not very high. Romney's Santorum. a million and a half. Right, that's and right. And Santorum's about uh, 175,000. But of course, Obama's been president for almost four years and has had time to build this infrastructure. So do we know yet, or are we going to have to sort of live our way into this, whether this is more substantial than just clicking on like and being one of the nominal members of a site with a million and a half people? Right. Does it I, turn into anything? Right. I, I feel the problem with this kind of advocacy is, and, and journalism, as some are calling this, you know, documentary, is that you only get one side of the story. And instead of being able to be presented with both sides of the story, it's very polarized, a la Fox News on the right, MSNBC on the, right. on the left. And it, it has that same feel, that you only get the information online that you want to get. I don't know that anti-Gingrich or Romney or Obama group uh, on Facebook that has a lot of people liking it is going to have a big impact on the campaign, but this is how people organize themselves these days online. They, they create a sense of community. They share information. Sometimes the information might be slanted or biased or completely inaccurate, um, but you have to play in this arena. That's why the campaigns are devoting a lot of attention to Facebook, and that's why the opponents of these candidates mm -hmm. are also uh, ginning up these groups. All my years of covering old-fashioned politics, the pros knew there were differing levels of commitment, whether you could get somebody to put a lawn sign on their lawn mm -hmm. or canvas at a mass transit station or do something as simple as wearing a button. This seems to be so effortless that it involves almost no commitment. And it's hard to understand just how deep this goes yet. Well, I still, I, it'll be a great test, Ray, to see how many people actually give money based on watching a documentary. You can get them to watch. It's a, it, as you say, it's very passive. But when it comes to taking an action, you're right. I think the answer is still pretty unknown. I am all for lawn signs and bumper stickers. They're part of the fun of politics, but it's very 20th century. I mean, we've already learned that campaigns can raise a ton of money through the internet. Ron Paul has demonstrated this again and again. So I don't think it's any longer theoretical. I think we saw it uh, in 2008 uh, in a big way, but now it's grown exponentially and the sophistication of these campaigns and the people who don't right. like the candidates has grown to the point that they can target, they can, it's kind of like Google does when the, uh, Google can, as you search for things on your computer, <laughs> learns which advertisements to target to you that you might be interested in. The campaigns are doing that as well. That's why the Obama campaign, maybe others, getting your email address is so significant so because important. it's a form of data mining. Mm -hmm. The more they know about you, the more they can try to send you messages that might appeal to you. And the Obama campaign itself says that video now on the web is the primary way that they are communicating. In the age of ever faster news cycles, one story that seems to have legs, and more legs than an Irish setter, <laughs> is uh, that would be five. the gathering pro and anti rush movement online. Is this something that should disturb, worry advertisers, stations, and the man himself making 50 million a year? Well, but Ford company actually talked about this, Ray, and said that they are not quite sure yet whether or not they should allow a vocal minority in social media drive business decisions. However, that's exactly what they did. Uh, and a lot of other co companies did as well. What's really fascinating about this is there are these hashtags on Twitter, which is a way you organize a subject. And so there's a stop rush, boycott rush, and one called hate radio. The difference here is that they target by name specific advertisers. There's one about Walmart. Uh, so that they do, the people who are opposed to Rush Limbaugh put pressure on these companies to withdraw their advertising from the Rush Limbaugh show because of the uh, attack that he made on, on the Georgetown Law student. Um, but it is troubling to a lot of people, even on the left, people who don't like Rush Limbaugh. Bill Maher, for example, has actually spoken out in favor of Limbaugh on this, because if you can use this tactic against somebody you don't like ideologically, you can use it against anybody, anybody. and it almost uh, does could have a chilling effect, not taking a stand one way or another on what Limbaugh said, but the use of, uh, of online organizing to try to kick somebody off the air. Howard Kurtz and Lauren Ashburn, good to talk to you both. Thank you. Thank you.